Success is predictable. Success is not luck. Every human wants to be successful. No human wants to fail. Everybody wants to succeed. So I want to give you five questions to write down that you must answer if you are going to be successful on this planet. These five questions are so important that they control the entire world. Everything that every human does on earth is motivated by these five questions. What are these five questions? Number one, write it down. Who am I? It's a difficult question to answer. The second question that controls the human race is where am I from? What is my source? Some say you came from a monkey. Others say you came from a salamander that crept up on the rock six million years ago and became a tadpole and became a frog which also became a monkey that became a man. Some believe that. The third question every human is battling with is why am I here? It's a tough question. The average human being does not know why they're on planet earth. They wake up every morning, go into a job they hate, working with people they don't like, getting paid less than they're worth, and dying too young from frustration because they don't know why they exist. The fourth question every human must answer is, what can I do? The average human on earth have no idea about their ability. 90% of the human population will die and never achieve more than 10% of their true ability. This is a tragedy. And the last question every human must answer is, where am I going? What is my destination? Everyone wants to know, what is my future? Where am I going in the next 20 years, 40 years? What will I be when I am 75 or 82? What is my destiny? These five questions are frustrating the human race. It is these five questions that changed my life. Because these five questions are the questions that I couldn't answer. I think success, first of all, is knowing my purpose in life. And if I ask you if you wanted to be successful, everybody in this room would say, absolutely. That's why you're here. As I have watched and observed successful people, what I have discovered about them is they really have figured out why they're here. They really do have their act together. And, and, and knowing their purpose in life is a stability for them. So that when everyone else is rocking and rolling and, 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 and things are a little unsteady and people are kind of leaving the ship and people are kind of abandoning their causes, with the, these people, they hold steady right throughout the storm because they, they have a true North Star. They truly are focused. It becomes, an, it becomes an anchor in their life that just holds them steady. And the anchor is a confidence based upon a knowledge of purpose. When I was 13 years old, I began to read the Bible for myself. My father was a Baptist pastor and he couldn't help me with the five questions. I went to a church and became religious and never got a question answered. So I decided to search for it myself. And I picked up the Bible at age 13, very young, teenager. And I began to read the book of Matthew. And the book of Matthew led me to the book of Mark. And then I read the book of Luke and and I memorized the book of John and, and my whole life as a teenager exploded. I became like an adult before time because I learned principles that adults didn't even know. And by the time I was 17 years old, I was the most famous teenager in my country because of the Bible I memorized. And it was during those years that I began to grapple with these five questions. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What am I really capable of doing? And where am I going? And I discovered that the greatest tragedy in life is not death. There's something worse than death. The greatest tragedy in life is life without a purpose. I've become convinced that there are two challenges that you and I have in life. And if we can accept this challenge and meet this challenge, face it well, life will be very fulfilling to us and it'll be very rewarding to the people around us. The first challenge is for us to find ourselves. And we find ourselves when we discover our purpose. Nothing is better than for a person created by God in His image with a plan for his or her life to find themselves. Find that purpose. It's what makes you solid. It's what makes you 
secure. It's, it, it's your mooring. It keeps you, it keeps you just exactly where you need to be so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. To discover your purpose, to find yourself. What a wonderful thing. That's what our subject is about today. Nothing is worse than being alive and not knowing why. Breathing oxygen and eating food and getting energy and don't know why you have it. This is a tragedy. To live for 80 years and still didn't know why you were here. That's a tragedy. Without a purpose, life has no meaning. It has no sense of destiny, no sense of precision. Actually, purpose is the third question. Why am I here? And this is the frustration of all humans. Success is not an experiment. You can predict success. I'm going to prove that in a minute. Success is designed by God to be predictable. But I want to quickly say the antithesis also is true. Failure is also predictable. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God says, I know the plans I have for you already. Plans to what? Prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I know your plans already. But there's a second challenge. Once we find our purpose, discover why we're here, there's a second challenge that we have that we face, and that is to lose ourselves. We're to find ourselves. Isn't it interesting to lose ourselves? And, and we lose ourselves when our purpose becomes bigger than us. It, to find a purpose, how important. Many people never do either in their life. They, they, ne they never find themselves, they never lose themselves. Some people, some people find themselves, but they never lose themselves. Very few people find themselves and lose themselves. And the aim of this lesson today is to help us know how to discover our purpose and then how to place that purpose in a position that is so much bigger than us that we can literally lose ourselves in the process. Now here is a paradox. Success is predictable, so you can literally plan success. I am successful today in my life globally impacting millions of people because I made a decision as a teenager as to what I want to be and do. What made me successful? I'm going to give you the answer now. And it's the same reason why people fail. Success is predictable and success is, is predictable because life is designed for your success. But failure is also predictable because failure is the same result as success. Let me explain what I mean. God designed everything he created to be successful. You will never see a bird who cannot fly naturally. You'll never see a fish who cannot swim naturally. Every seed, if you put it in the ground and give it water, you don't need to pray. It is designed to bring forth a tree. Everything God created has built into it its own success. And if the plant is here today and gone tomorrow, how much more important are you to God? So the first question we have to ask ourselves this morning is, is how do we find ourselves? That's challenge number one. And we find ourselves by, when we discover our purpose. Now this teaching of finding and losing is given to us by Jesus in Mark chapter 8. One of my favorite scripture verses. And, and, and just really hang with me here on this. God says, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace. Not for evil to give you hope in your final income. And it hit me that God has thoughts and plans for me. And he not only has thoughts and plans for me, he has thoughts and plans for you. God is more committed to your success than you are. Why? Your success is important to God. God needs you to succeed. When I discovered this, I became very bold. I put pressure on God. I discovered this when I was 17 years old. I discovered that God needed me to succeed. Let me explain why. Because success is built in to creation by every manufacturer. Success is important to every manufacturer who makes a product. When you, let me put it this way. Let me, let me contextualize this. When you woke up this morning, God was thinking about you. And when he created you in his image, he had plans for you. You're, you're not an accident. We're not here because we just kind of happen to be at the end of an explosion. That, that, that we are here because we are divinely placed here with the thoughts of God. And then it hit me. God, God's texting you this morning. He, he's texting you and he said, I, I just want you to know, I've been thinking about you. And I've not only been thinking about you, but i got plans for you. You talk about 
building your self-image. If he has a purpose for us, if he has plans for us, if he's been thinking about us, how do we find it? There are two questions we have to ask ourselves to find our purpose in life. And question number one is, what am I passionate about? Passion often is linked with purpose. Write the word reputation down in your notes. The word reputation is in the Bible, all through the Bible. Let me give you the statement in the Bible for reputation. It is namesake. Namesake. That's reputation. Everything a manufacturer does is for its reputation to protect its name. So the success of the product is necessary to protect the reputation of the company. So the worst thing that can happen to a manufacturer is when his product fails. His entire reputation and company can be destroyed. This is why whenever a company sells a product like a car and discovers a defect, they send out a massive recall and they say, bring it in free. We will repair it free. Why? If this doesn't work, our reputation can be destroyed. They don't like you. They like their name. So success is necessary for the manufacturer. You are a product. And the first thing the manufacturer placed on you is his image. The manufacturer says, let us make a product in our image. What I love to do is often what I should do. We have been created within us the capacity to have things that we enjoy greatly and a lot of times there is a definite relationship between what I am in love with and what I should be doing. We are created and wired in such a way that, that passion and purpose many times comes together and passion is the great energizer. Once you have passion, you have energy. Once you find your passion, you find your purpose, there is something energetic about it. You have never known a person who was passionate that lacked energy. If you have low energy, you don't have any passion. You know, some people, they're, they're already dead. They haven't made it official yet. But passion gives us a great amount of energy. And when we have that passion, there's something about how we love what we're doing and we enjoy what we're doing. And passion energizes us. I have come with good news from this day forward. You cannot fail anymore. God has to guarantee your success, not to protect you. God has to make sure that the vision he gives you succeeds because his reputation is on the line. The first thing he put on you is the most important thing to him, his image. That means your failure is bad for God. So when you read the Bible, all through the Bible, God would say these to his people. He would say, even though you are stiff-necked, you murmur, you complain. He said, I will prosper you, and I will restore you, and I will heal you, and I will redeem you. Listen, for my namesake. When I say passion and purpose are linked, that is usually the case. It is not always the case. It is possible to be passionate about something that you're not good at. It's possible to be passionate about something that you're not gifted in. But I know this, if you're passionate, it will increase your energy. And the second thing that I've discovered about passion is it sets us, it sets us apart. It sets us above the crowd. A person with passion always stands out. The world is such, so full of apathy. It's so full of average. It's so full of whatever. So once you have passion and once you have a, a sense of energy in your life, it, it just sets you apart. It, it distinguishes you. It already gives you what I would call a head start in success in life. This is why if he told you to go to university, don't worry about tuition. If he told you to build a business, you have the ability. If he told you to build a church, you have the ability. If he told you to go into politics, you have the ability. If he told you to be a lawyer, you have the ability. If he told you to be a teacher, you have the ability. If he told you to build a school, you have the ability. Whatever he told you, he will do it for his name. See, the reason why some of you don't get healed when you pray is because you want to get healed so you could feel good. That's why it's important to announce what God told you. When you make it public, you put pressure on it. So stop being afraid to believe your dream. Your success is good for God. So he has to make sure you succeed. When you discover who you are, you make announcements you can't pay for. 
Stop waiting for money before you make announcements. When you're passionate about something, it's not possible, but you do it anyway. When you're passionate about something, passion will take you where nothing else will ever take you. It'll give you that decided edge. It'll help you to stand out. Now, let me just say something about purpose and dreams and finding your purpose. I wrote a book a few years ago called Put Your Dream to the Test. And basically it's questions you need to ask yourself to make sure if your dream is a valid dream. Sometimes God has people literally designed to come along and complement each other so that the dream can be filled. Teamwork makes the dream work. I've seen it happen many, many times. I can tell you right now, for many of you, it's happened in this church. To some of you, your place, your purpose, your dream is to come alongside, compliment, add value, and do something for someone that they cannot do for themselves. But the second question we ask ourselves is not only what am I passionate about, but what are my strengths? What am I good at? What is my spiritual giftedness? Because when God created you, he gave you gifts, spiritual strengths, to enable you to find and fulfill your purpose. God created fish to swim. So a fish can't swim. His reputation is in trouble. God created seeds to bring forth trees. So if a seed doesn't bring forth a tree, God's reputation is in trouble. So God is very wise. He built into everything laws to guarantee its success. That's why God told Joshua, if you take my laws, read my laws, memorize my laws, obey my laws, accept my laws, submit to my laws, you shall have good success. Can I suggest something to you? When you discover the laws of God, you don't need to pray. Oh, look at you. You don't understand what I just said. The car that you bought was made by a manufacturer. The manufacturer built into the car the laws for function. You don't need to pray about what to put in your gasoline tank. It's a law. The manufacturer says you shall use unleaded gasoline only. He didn't ask your permission. He built the law into the car. And when it comes to you, it comes with the laws built in. Now, if you decide you like orange juice, and you're going to put orange juice in your car because you like orange juice then the car malfunctions in other words you don't bring your laws to god you submit to the laws of the manufacturer and it guarantees success therefore god has designed everything to function by laws and here's what i know that when, when you find your spiritual gift you'll be good at it you really will be it'll be just what you do well It'll fit. It'll be natural. It'll be easy. You'll have an opportunity to use it. When you find your spiritual gift, God's going to give you the opportunity to use it. He's not going to give you a gift and then not let you have the opportunity to use it for others. You'll be energized by it. When you find your spiritual gift, all of a sudden it'll give you an energy that, that you just didn't, I mean, you, you'll, 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 just, you'll just love it. You'll just love it. You won't wear out. Can I tell you something? When you're in the area of your weaknesses, you get tired, don't you? But when you're in the area of your strengths, you're energized. I have a degree in counseling, so when I started the ministry, I started counseling. The good news is I had a degree, the bad news is I wasn't any good. No energy. It was my weakness. I wasn't dealing in, out of my strengths. And one day I realized that when I counseled with people, I worked with their weaknesses and I wasn't good at that. But when I equipped people, I worked with their strengths. And all of a sudden it was like, I mean, a light, I mean, literally within, within a matter of a couple of days, I went from being worn out because I was working with weaknesses to be absolutely energized because I started working with people's strengths and started equipping them. And all of a sudden I began to understand what happens when you play to your strength zone, when you play in the areas where you're good at. And I would also say when you find your spiritual gifts, you'll have capacity to develop them. You, you, you'll, get, you'll really get good. You're good now, but once you start developing and working your spiritual gifts, you really get good. And this is why I want to take home this, write this down. Laws were given to guarantee success. Laws were not given to restrict you. Some of you test the manufacturer's law. God designed the fish to be in water. That's a law. Fish will never leave water. Birds were designed to fly in the air. They will never try to become fish. If you put a seed on the ground on a tiled floor in the lobby and leave it there for 50 years, it will remain a seed. Why? You disobeyed the law of the seed. It needs soil and moisture. 
humans are the only creatures God got problems with we are the only ones who will test the law test the law to see if it's true that's why you're broke divorced and sick success write this down is a result of decisions whatever you are right now you decided to become don't you blame anyone for your predicament right now success is a result of decisions failure in life is a result of decisions whatever you decide determines your destiny in other words everyone becomes what they decide to be I decided to be successful so I decided not to smoke because when I wrote my vision on paper at age 14 I saw my vision so I knew if I start taking drugs having sex and drinking alcohol the alcohol will kill my liver the smoke will destroy my lungs and the sex will give me a baby I can't pay for so my vision determine my discipline if you don't know where you're going you'll do anything with your life purpose brings discipline so that now that's how we find our purpose by our passion and by our, our giftedness so then how do we lose ourselves we lose ourselves when we give our purpose to something bigger than us when, when all of a sudden we say okay I, I've got to give myself to something bigger than me Jesus said it what he said he said you'll lose your life he said you'll lose your life when you follow me and when you give it for the sake of the gospel when you when you when you when you take your purpose and position it in a in something bigger than you he said all of a sudden you'll begin to lose yourself so for your notes when you're bigger than your purpose when you and I when we're bigger than our purpose we have a career I deal in the marketplace all the time when leadership and I deal all the time with people that have careers and most of them they're bigger than their career they, they they've got a career but they're it's always looking out for me and and how am I going to advance and how am I going to achieve and it, they're, they're bigger than they're they're big they're bigger than their purpose and so they have a career but can I tell you something when your purpose is bigger than you you have a calling that's how my journey began I want to make a difference and then one day I realized I had to go beyond that. There was another step and I went from, I want to make a difference to step two. I want to make a difference doing something that makes a difference. This is now I'm going to begin to lose myself. I'm going to begin to lose myself because now I'm focusing on doing something in my life that has eternal value. I'm going to do something in my life that, that is bigger than me, that lives beyond me. That, 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 that can never be satisfied or fulfilled or achieved by me. I want to make a difference doing something that makes a difference. I'm, I'm, now, I'm now beginning to lose myself. And then I went to step three. I want to make a difference doing something that makes a difference with people who make a difference. Write this down. A true friend is anyone who will help you get to your destiny. So if anyone wants you to do anything, that stopped you from your destiny that's not a friend that's an enemy decisions determine success God wants you to live your whole life with good memories not regrets so he protects you by giving you laws to protect your memory and there's some of you in this room right now your memories are tragic if you obey God you'll never have a bad memory God wants you to succeed he gave you birth to succeed he wants you to succeed more than you want to succeed for his namesake and God is faithful to the vision he put in your life he is faithful to it because he needs you to succeed for his reputation your future is God's past in other words God finished you before he started you God's plan for your life is already finished. He's just hoping you'll just keep the laws. You know, it's incredible. When I discovered this, I was a teenager and I became very bold because what you were born to do is already finished. When I discovered that, I became very confident. God already finished you before he started you. In the book of Isaiah, when I read this, it changed my life. God says, remember this. Put it in your mind and don't forget it. Now, three of those sentences means the same thing. Whenever God says something three times, it's the most important thing. It's the same word as verily. He says, remember this. 
Fix it in your mind. Do not forget it. Same words. There's a fourth part for me. I want to make a difference doing something that makes a difference with people that make a difference at a time when it makes a difference. Got to make it count. I don't get many more do it overs. Got to make sure that I do it right on the front end. What's the difference between success and significance? Success is when I add value to myself. Significance is when I add value to others. And you lose yourself not in success. You find yourself in success. You lose yourself in significance. It's when we begin to add value to others that we begin to lose ourselves because now the cause is greater. Our why, our purpose, our why is bigger than us. And when our why is bigger than us, when you find your why, you'll find your way. Everything changes at that time. I shared with you earlier that I'm 66, so people ask me all the time, they say, John, when are you going to retire? And I tell them I'm not going to retire. And they look at me and say, well, why not? You can. Of course I can. I'm old enough to retire. I have enough money to retire. I've, I've been very blessed. I'm very grateful. I mean, I've written 25 million books. Well, then, John, John, let me ask you, why, why, don't, you, why don't you retire? I, I, I'm not going to retire because, because I've lost my way. My, my purpose is greater than me. I have a calling, not a career. I, a career you win, a career you kind of phase out. And there's all kinds of things you do with a career, but with a calling, I mean, I, what I do is, is what I love to do, and, and I don't want to retire. I don't have any desire to retire. What is so important, God says, remember this. I am God, and there's none like me. He said, now, don't forget that. I am God, and there's none like me. Second, I am God, and I always said the end before the beginning. He says, I am God. There's none like me. And I always said the end before the beginning. Next verse. And I make known from ancient times what is yet to come. I say, my purpose will stand. That scripture changed my life. God says, look, I always said the end first. Then I back up and begin. That means I finish before I start. I complete before I commence anything. God says, you see, whenever you see me start something, that is evidence that it's finished. So your success is already finished. I'm not going to, but I'm going to tell you, until uh, I die, I think I'll live. And I think I'll live because I have a passion for what I do. And I have a purpose for what I do. And I've found my purpose and I've lost my purpose. Every time you put yourself into someone else, everything changes. Here's the good news. God would not allow you to have been conceived in your mother's womb unless there was something already finished that you were born to start. That's why as a child you were dreaming all the time. That was your destiny screaming at you. This is why you got big dreams. Those dreams are real. Don't ever judge your destiny by the location of your birth. Stop feeling bad about yourself. Stand up straight. Square your shoulders. Go to work tomorrow, walking like you are a winner. Today, God's thinking about you. Today, God has a plan for you. You are special, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. God is thinking about you and has a plan for you right now.